Throughout the interwar years in World War II, the Soviet Union presented itself as the greatest threat to Romania. At the same time, Europe realized that tanks were the future of warfare. Romania followed in the footsteps of its northern neighbors by financing a tank force during World War II. Following World War I, Romania stood as one of the beneficiaries of the 1919 Treaty of Saint Germain and the 1920 Treaty of Trianon, the partitioning of Austria and Hungary respectively, in which Transylvania, in some territory west of it, was rewarded to Romania. Overall, Romania doubled its territory and population. The manpower and industry that Romania gained from this annexation provided it with the means to initiate domestic tank production in the 1930s. Unfortunately though, the Great Depression devastated Romania in the early 1930s and significantly hampered production of all things. In addition, political instability negated Romanian industry. Romania's first experience with tanks stemmed from their alliance with France during the Great War. Fearing Soviet aggression in the aftermath of World War I, Romania had purchased numerous FT-17 light tanks from France. By the time World War II began in 1939, the French tanks were painfully obsolete and were mainly used for training or non-combat roles. Interestingly, despite their obsolescence, they were used against the Germans in the August 1944 Romanian coup. In the 1930s, due to the fact that their domestic industry was lacking, Romania looked to foreign markets to purchase a light tank that could be used to add an armored element to their cavalry corps. Their primary motive was to implement a light tank for reconnaissance purposes and a medium tank for infantry support. Romania maintained very good relations with their neighbor, Czechoslovakia, during the interwar years and was prepared to purchase tanks from them. The first mass-produced Czech tank was the VZ-33 in 1934. It saw only limited production run due to it having a stationary turret, which was a major design flaw, as well as ineffective suspension and optics. A new tank, named the AH-4R, was designed and produced in 1936, and although Czechoslovakia did not adopt it into its own army, they put it on the export market. Romania examined other tanks from other countries, but eventually purchased 35 AH-4Rs from Czechoslovakia in 1936 to use them in reconnaissance roles. Romania named their version the R1. Due to Romanian tank prerequisites differing from the Czech ones, the delivery of the R1 was delayed two years until 1938 as the tanks were modified to Romanian standards. After purchasing 35 R1 tanks from Czechoslovakia, Romania negotiated a license to produce the vehicle in 1939. Romania originally planned to produce 382 R1s with this license, but quickly scrapped the whole project and declared the R1 obsolete. Indeed, the lengthy three-year time period it took Romania to obtain the original 35 vehicles to their specifications delayed production and negotiating the production license took so long that the R1 had already become obsolete. In terms of the R1's design, the Romanian tank was different from the original Czech design in that it had 12 mm of frontal armor instead of 10 mm. The frontal armor was relatively thin compared to other tanks of the time, but the 30 degree angle it was oriented at effectively meant that the armor thickness was 24 mm. Its weakest armor was 5mm. When this tank was first produced by Czechoslovakia in 1936, the armor was standard for the time, but by the eve of World War II, it was subpar. In addition, the bolted armor plates made for a cheap production cost, but reduced the strength of the armor. Still, the tank was only effective against infantry weapons, and even Soviet anti-tank rifles could easily penetrate the armor. In addition, the armament was lacking. With only two 7.92mm machine guns, the R1 was not effective against enemy tanks. One machine gun was placed in the turret, while one was placed on the side of the hull. In this way, it fulfilled its role as a cavalry and infantry support vehicle. 
the R1 was heavier than its Czech counterpart. Its larger, 54 horsepower engine propelled it to a maximum speed of 45 km per hour on road or 20 km per hour off road. Ironically, as a reconnaissance vehicle, no radios were installed on the R1, with crews often needing to use signal flags for communication. Another thing that limited its effectiveness was the fact that it only had two crew members. Because one crew member had to drive, it made operating two machine guns at once impossible, marring its effectiveness as a cavalry support vehicle. In June 1941, Romania joined Germany in the invasion of the Soviet Union. The R1s were incorporated into the different Romanian cavalry brigades. The small quantity of tanks, only 35, made them unable to conduct large mobile movements, and half of them had been damaged but recoverable by the end of September. Many took part in the siege of Odessa in August and September, and suffered heavy losses against prepared Soviet defenses. For the next year, after experiencing heavy losses, they mostly performed security duties in the occupied lands. In August of 1942, R1s were recalled to the front lines to support the offensive towards Stalingrad. Stalingrad saw some of the toughest fighting of the war, and most R1s were lost in the battle. In 1943, R1s were again called away from frontline service. Ideas for upgrading the R1s armament were laid out after losses on the Eastern Front, but they were cancelled due to the upgrades being insufficient. For instance, a modified R1 chassis carrying a 45mm gun was proposed, but that was ineffective against medium and heavy Soviet tanks. When Romania switched sides in August 1944, the remaining R1s were sent to fight against Hungary and Germany. Most historians agree that the R1 performed poorly due to its lack of radio, poor visibility, and poor armor. It was not an inherently bad vehicle, but the long development process it went through rendered it obsolete by the time it was ready. Romania maintained good relations with France throughout the interwar years, making it easy for them to purchase tanks from them. In 1937, Romania began negotiations to purchase 200 R35 tanks from France. Negotiations were bogged down though, because France was reluctant to export weapons when they needed all they could get due to the possibility of war with Germany. By 1939, only 41 R-35s had been delivered to Romania. In addition, in September and October of 1939, overwhelmed Polish defenders fled to Romania for refuge. Romania confiscated the 34 Polish R-35 tanks that had escaped giving them an inventory of 75 total R-35 tanks. When Germany invaded Czechoslovakia in March 1939, importing new Czech tanks became impossible. Romania was not yet a part of the Axis, and Germany did not want to sell them tanks as a result. A lack of other tanks forced Romania to use the French R-35s. Romania used the R-35s during the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union, and they quickly realized that the tank was obsolete due to its thin armor and small gun compared to the tanks of their Soviet adversaries. The R-35s took part in the Siege of Odessa in 1941, and were unable to make a significant impact. As a result, the main goal of Romanian engineers was to upgrade the armament of the R-35, the current short barrel 37mm anti-tank gun was ineffective against modern Soviet tanks. There was initially debate over how the upgrade should be made. Designers debated over two options. One, to replace the current French R35 turret with captured T26 turrets and install a French 47mm gun. Or two, to keep the current French R35 turret but replace the 37mm gun with captured Soviet 45mm guns. Romania went with the latter option due to the availability of many captured 45mm Soviet anti-tank guns. Also, the French turret had thicker armor than the Soviet T-26. In this way, Romania was very resourceful. Modifications of the French turret needed to be made 
because of the need to make room for their larger 45mm gun. Likewise, the turret was extended forward to accommodate the recoil system. The optics also needed to be adjusted. Designers tried to fit a coaxial machine gun in the turret, but the large size of the 45mm cannon made it impossible. The R-35 was designated as a tank destroyer, so a machine gun was technically not necessary. In addition, the number of rounds the tank could carry was reduced from 90 37mm shells to just 30 45mm shells, so it needed to be restocked often. Trials for the new R-35 prototype took place in the summer of 1943, nearly a year after the design was initially proposed. Ironically, the upgraded 45mm gun was still ineffective against the T-34 and KV-1, making it an unsuccessful tank on the battlefield. Still, the availability of the French R-35s and the Soviet 45mm guns made the Romanian version an easily produced and resourceful tank. Another thing is that the R-35 relied on the seizure of 45mm ammunition. Fortunately for Romania, they had captured large ammunition stockpiles during the invasion. According to Soviet ammunition trials, the 45mm anti-tank gun on the Romanian R-35 could pierce T-34 armor at ranges less than 400 meters. Heavier Soviet tanks were practically invulnerable to the 45mm gun, and it was very unlikely that an R-35 would get within a close distance to the tank. When Romania switched to the Allied side, it struggled against German Panzer IVs, Panthers, and Tigers. Overall, the effectiveness of the 45mm gun was negligible. In addition, with just 40mm of frontal armor, it was incredibly vulnerable to enemy tanks. The inheritance of incredibly poor design features on the R-35 would limit the overall effectiveness of the Romanian modernization efforts. The R-35 was an objectively inferior tank by the time World War II began in 1939. For instance, the tank was only operated by two crew members. The crew was overworked, leading to terrible ergonomics. Survivability was also incredibly poor. If just one crew member got knocked out, the tank was effectively disabled because it would be impossible to operate a tank with just one person. Additionally, the 82 horsepower engine often overheated and produced enough power to reach only 20 km per hour on road and 15 km per hour off road. The suspension was poor and uneven ground was often avoided due to terrible performance. As part of the modernization efforts, Many R-35s were fitted with new suspension and tracks for increased durability. In a one-year period from the summer of 1943 to August 1944, 30 R-35s were converted to have the 45mm Soviet anti-tank gun. When Romania switched sides in August of 1944, the country effectively came under Soviet occupation. The Soviets dictated what was allowed to be produced by Romanian factories, and they did not permit the production of R-35s. The modified R-35s saw action in Hungary and Czechoslovakia. The Romanian R-35 stemmed from a lack of modern tanks from Germany. If Germany had exported modern tanks to Romania, the R-35 likely would not have been used. Romania did the best it could with a poorly designed tank, but despite its efforts, the performance of the tank was not greatly improved. After the Soviet counterattack at Stalingrad in November 1942, many Romanian tanks were lost and it was realized that a better tank was needed to fight the Soviets. Germany was still reluctant to give tanks to Romania due to their own weapon shortages, so Romania was forced to develop its own design. Romanian dictator Ion Antonescu demanded a medium tank with the capabilities of the Soviet T-34, but the task was simply impossible due to inadequate industry. Lacking the necessary resources to start from scratch, Romania initiated the project by using its large stockpile of captured Soviet tanks and guns to make an improvised tank. Many Soviet T-60s had been captured, which was a fast, lightly armored tank. 
they were equipped with 20mm cannons, which was utterly useless in this stage of the war. With the goal of creating a tank destroyer, Romania proceeded to modify the T-60, and the resulting modifications were heavily inspired by the German Martyr. Numerous M1936 F22 76mm anti-tank guns had been captured by Romania, and they were placed on the T-60 chassis, creating the TACAM T-60. The weapon was capable of knocking out Soviet tanks, with 67mm of armor penetration at a 1km distance. The 76mm gun could traverse 32 degrees to either side, 8 degrees up, and 5 degrees down. Other modifications included strengthened suspension and road wheels to accommodate the added weight of the gun. In addition, salvaging armor from captured Soviet light tanks, a three-sided armored shield was placed behind the gun to protect the three crew members, amounting to 15 millimeters of sloped armor. An upgraded recoil system in storage for 44 rounds of ammunition was added as well. As part of the recoil system, improved brakes were installed that could lock the wheels while firing. Additionally, the frontal armor was increased to 35 millimeters and the sides to 25 millimeters. The armor was incredibly thin for 1943, but the gun performed pretty well. A light machine gun was also used for anti-infantry rolls. With a reliable engine of 80 horsepower, propelling it to a maximum road speed of 40 km per hour, it was quite fast. In total, 34 were produced from January 1943 to January 1944. They saw combat in Moldova and Bessarabia in 1944 against the Red Army. Most were destroyed, but a few were confiscated by the USSR once Romania defected to their side. They were later scrapped. Overall, the TACAM T-60 was a resourceful design, but its thin armor and open crew compartment meant that it was extremely vulnerable in combat. Its aging 76mm gun also struggled to take out heavier tanks like the KV-1 and IS-2. Between 1937 and 1939, Romania purchased 125 slightly modified Czechoslovak LTVZ-35 light tanks, designated as R2s in Romanian service. This was as a defensive measure due to the rising threat of war in Europe. The tank performed acceptably during the invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, but became obsolete by mid-1942 as they struggled to take out the increasing numbers of enemy T-34s. The 37mm Czech gun was insufficient. In response to stronger Soviet armor, and inspired by the German Martyr and Romanian TAC MT-60, it was decided to modify the R2 light tanks and turn them into tank destroyers. Unlike the TAC MT-60, the TAC R2 used a 76mm ZIS-3 cannon, which had a higher muzzle velocity and could take out T-34s at a range of 1km. It saw especially poor performance against heavier Soviet KV and IS tanks. The ZIS-3 gun was placed in a three-sided casemate on the turret, and trials in 1943 proved successful. One disadvantage was that the 76mm gun was very large, and the tank's large profile made it difficult to conceal on the battlefield. The gun shield had 17mm of frontal armor and 10mm of side armor. Similarly to the TAC MT-60, the TAC R2 used recycled armor plates from the captured T-26s and BT tanks. Germany had captured large quantities of ZIS-3 guns and ammunition, and they shipped them to Romania for use on the TAC MR2. The inconvenience was that Germany sent the weapons to Romania at a very slow rate, so not many TAC MR2s could be produced. The frontal armor was kept the same as the original 1936 Czech design, namely a meager 25mm. The weight of the new gun also slowed down the vehicle to a max speed of just 30 km per hour on the road. Production began in February 1944, and 20 R2s were converted by June. Over time, the weapons and standards of World War II changed rapidly, 
and although the TAC MR2 could have been successful in 1942 and 1943, it was quite ineffective by 1944 standards. This, along with a lack of gun imports from Germany, resulted in the end of its production. Bleak upgrade proposals were made to install the German 88mm gun on the R2 chassis, but it is doubtful that Romania would have been able to obtain an adequate supply of those guns from Germany for production. In any case, production of the TAC MR2 and any prospects of future upgrades was shut down in August of 1944 when the USSR occupied the country. Ironically, although the TAC MR2 was made in response to Soviet tanks, it never saw combat against them due to Romania's surrender. The tanks saw action against Axis forces in Hungary, Austria, and Czechoslovakia until April 1945. Overall, Romanian domestic tank production stemmed from the nation's inability to import modern tanks from Germany. Lacking an effective industry for heavy weapons, many of Romania's tanks lacked the characteristics of modern designs. Romania proved to be resourceful by upgrading their tanks by installing captured Soviet weapons on them. In addition, the long time it took to develop tanks and a general lack of resources meant that when a design was ready for production, it was often already obsolete.